Fellas, you know it, I know it, and the ladies know it. Size matters, and so does reliability. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you got this little guy and you're like, I'm not too sure about him anymore, or he just can't put out the power that you'd like. So you're gonna go look at the big P pump here. And in this video, I'm gonna be putting this P7100 on this 01 24 valve behind me here. I'll do a little walk around, tell you about it. We're gonna probably have a multi-part series. I'm not too, too sure how long this is gonna take. There's gonna be some other parts I'm gonna put on as well. But uh, introductions out of the way. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing if you like this kind of content um, and check out some other videos as well. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, let's dig in. The subject for our P-Pump 24 valve slot today is about as nice as you're going to get for a second gen. It's a 01 24 valve 6 speed owned by Chris and he's going to tell us a little bit about what he has into this thing and why he went P-Pump swap. Say hey Chris. Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> this is my 01. As you can see, I've uh, sunk a little bit of fundages into this thing. Don't tell the girlfriend. <sighs> yeah, don't tell her. Shh. Don't go post this video live. <laughs> uh, Evil Fab compound kit. We're running a SXE 362 into a S488. A little bit big, I know, which is why we're doing the P-Pump. <laughs> Marine valve cover. Under that valve cover, we got Hamilton push rods, valve springs, all the goodies to keep valve float away. We're running an S and B intake horn. Underneath that is a fancy Glacier Diesel Performance Air Ram. Uh, my good buddy Kevin at Full Send Diesel hooked me up right with a brake reservoir cover as well as a coolant cap, a uh, coolant tube as well. What else? What else? We're running Ducky 6x16 injectors. Awesome. Push rods too, I think. Push rods. Mentioned. Yeah, we're running push rods. I did forget that. Uh, what clutch? Right now we're running a, what is it? A Valair dual disc. Yeah. Valair dual disc with the organic slash synthetic disc, I believe. Yeah. Seem to be running good. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see how it lasts with this set. <laughs> uh, why did you decide to go P pump? Need more fuel. Yeah, pretty much. She doesn't make enough power. Yeah, and RPM too. We uh, got to spend five grand. Five K governor springs. Yeah, we're well, gonna make it scream. Let her eat. Let her eat. Yeah, great work, Kate. Well, we're gonna dig into it here. I You're probably thinking, "Oh my God, that's a lot of parts." Now, when it comes to doing this P pump swap. Some things might find their way into your shopping cart online that uh, you didn't think you'd need. Well, when it comes to this, uh, Chris didn't want to do things twice. He figured, well, we're pulling it apart. May as well do everything right now. And he ended up just buying the whole store out pretty much. Um, so I'm going to kind of list over everything that we've got here. Uh, tell you what's needed, what isn't, what to consider. Um, and yeah, kind of try to save you some money or tell you what you can do while you're doing this thing. So... Uh, right here is the uh, vacuum pump seal for the back of the gear case because you're installing the whole P-Pump gear case. And then we've got a billet front cover. It's optional, you don't need it. It looks pretty cool. Up to you if you want to do it while we're here. We've got, of course, the P-Pump gear case. This is one from Crazy Carl's. However, I've used the Amazon or eBay P-Pump gear cases and honestly, the casting looks better than the factory Dodge one. So pick your poison. Typically, I pay, I think, 200 Canadian, probably like 175 US for a P-Pump gear case. Um, Chris also got some upgraded power-driven boots. Since the intercooler is going to be off, the head will be off, all that. Um, there's the P-Pump drive gear, which you'll need for the swap, of course, as the VP1 has a small center bore on. Uh, to pimp the pump out, we've got some 5K governor springs, some stainless delivery valve holders. I'll go over installing everything, everything into the pump as well. It's going to get full cut delivery valves and some little bit of dress up parts. Um, but those are all optional. You could just run a stock injection pump. Got some P pump conversion lines. Now, if you check my channel, I've got a video where I've rebent the VP lines uh, using a torch and some heat and straighten them out. And I managed to kind of make like a budget P-Pump 24 valve swap line. However, diesel auto power sells some very well-priced injection lines for your P-Pump swap, uh, as well as these ones are shied lines as uh, well. Um, you might wonder what size do I pick for injection lines? Um, I usually typically go for 0.94, I believe, or uh, for, with most swaps, just because it's a little bit bigger, kind of gives you a little bit of low. Um, and it's kind of good for every build. Honestly, when it comes to injection line size, it, from what I've been able to find, 
The larger the inner diameter of the line, it's used as a way of retarding timing to get the really high timing sled pull engines working, as well as a way to dampen the pulses from a really big injection pump. Um, with my 13 mil and 5x20s, I run a stock size line on my truck. I believe Chris went with uh, 6.84, but I'll uh, make a little random in the video here covering that, uh, what he did get. Um, yeah, couple options there. Most people are going to be fine with a 0.7478, I believe. I think it's a 0.78. And the next step up, you can get like a 0.83 or whatever. Um, if you're just doing this for like, you want it to be as nice and tame as possible, you go with the stock size line. If you're kind of making a little bit of a race truck, just go with a 0.94. Don't do a 0.120 unless it's a thicker line 0.120 as they're known to crack. Um, and typically go with mild steel as the stainless lines um, with the uh, thicker inside have been known to snap as well. Um, so like a stainless 0.74 is probably fine. Um, something to consider. I've heard a couple cases of them breaking. Um, we got, of course, the injection pump itself here. The, uh, this one is a 215 pump, which you can identify uh, on the data tag on the side here, right there. And uh, the last three numbers, one moment. On the data tag, it will be 887 or 913 for a 215 pump. There's one other series of numbers as well, but those are the majority of the pumps are going to be those. Um, if you're looking for a pump secondhand, make sure it has an AFC housing like this, as there are agricultural applications that have a different governor housing in the back, and you just can't use them. Also, if you're getting a pump that you know may have been off another application, you kind of want to know if it's like worth putting on your truck. Um, this is PE, uh, PES 6, 6 is the amount of plungers it has, then P120 is the diameter of the plunger in the pump, so all your Dodge pumps are going to be 120, which is 12 mil, and some of the agricultural applications will be uh, 11 mil, and then the odd 8.3 Cummins application will be 13 mil here, but um, I have some videos I'm going to be putting out on just inspecting pump, the pump, checking health, things like that, but um, I won't go too far into it. Uh, just make sure that you get a, uh, the right pump for your application. Uh, we've got a billet tappet cover here. Uh, I believe this one was a Amazon special. Oops. As it wasn't too badly priced, and I've had a couple buddies use it, and it uh, works good. However, one thing to note with some billet tappet covers is they may not have internal baffles on them. So you have to run a catch can with this one because there's no baffles for those holes. Uh, the reason he got that is because in order, when you pull the pump off, there's a tappet cover right behind. Actually, I got a 12 valve right here. You have tap cover, and with kind of more power, these are known to blow out. I run a stock one because I'm cheap and with a new gasket, but. Uh, once you kind of start cranking these engine up, these old gaskets end up just shitting out right there. So it's good to do while you're in here because you don't want to do it later on because you have to pull the pump. As well as we're going to do a camshaft in this, uh, I believe Chris picked up a 188-220. Um, yep, yeah, right here. A 188-220 cam. We're going to drop that in because in order to do the P-pump swap, you have to pull the gear case. In order to pull the gear case, you have to pull the camshaft unless you want to pull the cam gear on the engine, but I don't have the tool to do that. And he wanted to say, he said, the hell with it, let's just put the cam in while we're doing it. So um, if you're doing this, of course you're doing it on a 24 valve here, the stock 24 valve cam is the best factory Cummins camshaft you can get. Um, if you're keeping this thing sub 600 horsepower, run the stock cam. If you're kind of building like a tow compound rig and you want a little bit more jam, run the uh, 178-208. Eight, I believe, uh, which is a good, like, stage one, or I think it's a stage two. Um, <clears throat> and then you can do a 183218, which is a stage three for a kind of, like, mid-range 700, 800. The 188220 is, like, more of a high RPM, high power kind of cam. Um, you can't hurt, the, hurt performance by picking the wrong cam for your application, but Chris is going for a 1,000 horsepower off this combination, so... That's, he decided to go with the 188-220. Um, do note when picking a camshaft to know if your block or head is being decked as the 188-220 is the biggest drop-in cam you can have and you have to really have to check your tolerances to make sure it'll fit. 
Moving on to more pieces here. Uh, Chris has, is waiting on his uh, fast to come in and we've got a dual feed for the pump here where instead of just the single feed on the side here, it uses the front port as well. So we've got a dual feed. Um, these are okay. The trouble I have with it is that the fitting into it is the same size as the two out of it. So you don't really see a ton of benefit. The one I have on my other truck, I have a, I believe a dash 10 uh, inlet and then it tees into two dash eights. So you actually kind of have a little bit of a benefit from the dual flow. Um, or you can also just do just a straight dash 10 just for the pump. It's not gonna be a power killer. Um, this is for a truck using a fast and I don't have the new fast here. Something to note, if you have a 24 valve truck with a fast on it, the fast from the 24 valve is rated at 23 PSI max pressure and the P-pump fast is rated at 45 PSI. However, you can go up to, not using a fast, but other pumps go up to uh, 100 PSI with the pump. Um, so he chose to get the proper 12 valve fast for it. However, on another buddy's application that we did a P-pump 24 valve swap, we just put a different restrictor ball in the faster raised pressure and I believe his sits at like 35 and it's been enough. It's made good power. Um, you don't even have to run the fast as well. On a P-pump 24 valve that I built, I ran a 12 valve camshaft which has the lobe on it to run the factory mechanical lift pump. So I adapted the mechanical lift pump over and I ran that on the P-pump 24 valve that I ran. So that's another option. Then you could have a fully mechanical 24 valve no electronics, no electronic pumps. That's another option and way of doing it. Um, these pieces are just for the billet tappet cover. It's got a new intake gasket. Um, I'm not too sure what's in here. I believe it might be a top end gasket kit or something like that. No, I believe it's a conversion gasket it's for the gear case. Um, it's got a fleece coolant bypass as things just snowball and snowball and snowball. And in doing this truck, the uh, pull the valve train has to come out to pull the cam to pull the gear case so all the valve trains out of there he wants to see, and uh, he's like well I want to o-ring the head because he's gonna be making some big power here so the head's gonna come off it's gonna get o-ringed and while the head's off we're gonna do the coolant bypass since it's gonna be easier to get to the back of the engine you know how this things go as I said things just jump in your cart and it just one thing leads to another and it snowballs from there um, we've got the apps adapter kit here so your bell crank assembly on the 24 valve is right here. And it's a, it's a nice setup. It feels nice. He liked that he had this cover on it. So he's going to run the existing aft bell crank assembly. And there's the adapter kit allows you to use that, use the same throttle cable, all that. Um, however, you can just run the factory uh, throttle assembly. The uh, reason behind using the apps assembly is I believe you can retain cruise control I'm not 100% sure on this there's some reason behind wanting to use this on a peep on 24 valve setup but um, also in Chris's case it was cheaper just to buy the adapt app adapter setup to run the pump than to get a throttle assembly cable all that jazz um, so that's why we chose that uh, so you might have to consider that that or the stock one for your peep on 24 valve build in addition to all this, everything's gonna come apart. We've got a fluid dampener as well. He's got the full power kit where you drill and put dowels in for the, or is it a screw? I've actually never even done one of these things here. It's a drill pin kit. So I guess, yeah, you install some pins for the fluid damper to uh, hold to the crankshaft. Got the hub here and the fluid damper itself. I'm an ATI man myself. I prefer the ATI balancers. Um, but it's up to you. Many people like the fluid amperers, many people like the ATIs. I use ATI. So uh, Chris decided to go with the fluid amper. Um, I believe that covers everything. Just to kind of do a little, oh, there's one more box. Sorry. A couple more things. Uh, you're gonna need a fuel shutoff solenoid. However, you don't have to have one of these. You can use a mechanical fuel shutoff if you wanna go full mechanical on it. Um, however, we just decided to go with the factory fuel off, fuel shut off solenoid, so I'll show wiring that in correctly with a relay, making it look good. Um, this was off of Amazon, I think it was like $35, 
Um, I think when I asked the local Napa once, I think they wanted $700 for one of these things. So just a ridiculous amount of money. I don't know why the markup is so crazy on them. Some optional things is this uh, cam sensor adapter for the gear case. So we're going to have to notch the gear case out a little bit to fill this, uh, fit this. But this allows the stock 24 valve cam sensor to be used, which will give your, you your RPM reading. And then we have the P-Pump oil feed. Uh, you can use a factory P-Pump oil feed, which is on the back side here. However, with the 24 valve, it's super tight between the pump and the head. So people relocate it to the front of the pump. So I'll do that. And then here's just studs for the gear case here. Um, <clears throat> with regards to wiring for the P-Pump 24 valve swap, uh, you can run the stock 24 valve wiring, everything like that. If you have a... 98 to 2000 truck kind of early 2000 kind of 1999 that's kind of a weird gear uh they have a crank sensor uh which is a tone ring on the crankshaft and that's what they read rpm off of so you don't need the cam sensor adapter in that application but you do need the crank sensor to run the factory wiring to have your rpm readout and to have the trans shift properly and the uh uh, alternator to charge in Chris's application which is a let's say late 2000 to 2002 you need the cam sensor in order to have the rpm on the dash and a couple other things to work um, I'm not entirely sure on how automatic function works I believe you need the app sensor adapter for the 24 valve um, with the automatic and then you do need the cam sensor um, and it'll work his is a manual so it's of course a little bit of easier modification my preferred method, if you want it as OE as possible, and the cleanest setup is a 98 12-valve engine harness. So just the harness for the engine. Use the PCM from 98 12-valve, and then you plug right into your 24-valve fuse box. Um, you have to jump a wire for the pull function of the fuel shutoff solenoid, as the fuse box is not wired for it. And um, But that makes everything work as correct. Use a P-pump, uh, 12 valve, P-pump, 12 valve, throttle assembly, your alternator charges, cruise works, there's no engine lights, everything works as it should. That's how my truck is more or less done, except it's a 6, 7, 12 valve in an O2, 24 valve, engine bay harness, all that. Um, couple options. Uh, man, this is a little, a little, get a little long on the tooth here. I'm trying to cover as many things as possible, uh, so bar, bear with me. Ooh, wait. It's a lot of blabbing, isn't it? <laughs> I hope that by the end of the video, you won't have any any more questions with regards to people in 24 valves. However, if I miss something, comment below. I'll reply to it. If it's something totally obvious, I'll pin it so others can see it as well. The next part of the series will be disassembly. And as you can see, I've already kind of got the engine torn down. However, the video is not edited. So that'll be about a week after this video if it's not already done and released by the time you're watching this. Uh, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're not already. Um, if you are new to the channel, I have all sorts of diesel performance content. Um, I'm going to be milking this truck for quite a bit of videos covering drivability, power, uh, the install, P-pump mods, all that. I've got a whole bunch more plaid. Anyways, you've heard enough of me talking for today. Uh, thanks for watching. See you in another video.